Greetings, meat cutting culinary team, and welcome to day seven, the final day of meat cutting lectures. To begin with, we're going to talk about understanding poultry. Um, poultry is basically any bird that has been domesticated for human consumption. What that means is wings are clipped, nets are in place, whatever it might be, the birds have been primarily raised for eating. Poultry store fat in one of three locations. We talked about this on days one and two during lecture. They store fat in the abdominal cavity, in the skin, and in the fat pad, um, or the tail feather, wi fail, tail feather wiggler, um, sometimes called the Pope's nose. The age of the bird is more important than the sex of the bird until it's fully matured. Older birds will have much tougher muscle fibers, which decreases its use and renders it usable for stews, soups, and socks. As we've talked about all along throughout lecture, as the animal ages, the muscle fiber itself begins to enlarge because it's carrying more weight, it needs to be stronger, it's pumping iron, it's trying to impress the chicks, whatever. Um, it's not going to be suitable for broiling or frying, and that's why generally the younger classifications of poultry are called broiler or fryers. Younger birds are more preferred because they have l m less muscle development. The, j the meat tends to be a little bit juicier and a little bit sweeter as a result of less muscle development. The calcification of the keel bone is the primary identifying mark for determining how old the bird is. We also talked about this on days one and two. When you actually remove that keel bone, like when we did the boneless, skinless chicken breast, and you pull that out and hold it, the larger the bony part is, the older the bird is. The larger the cartilaginous part is, the cartilagey, wiggly, soft part is, the younger the bird is. Another way of determining the age of the bird, if you happen to get the trachea or windpipe, if you have an older bird, you'll have a very thick trachea. Um, it almost feels like an a electrical conduit in a, in a small form. There are six categories of poultry as identified by the United States Department of Agriculture. Chicken, turkey, duck, pigeon, goose, guinea. Commercial versus free-range chicken farming. Uh, Monday through Friday in the United States alone, there's some 100 million birds that are processed. That's a lot of freaking chicken. Uh, commercial chickens, as identified by the USDA, must be raised in coops, if they are raised in coops, that are one by one. We also uh, know that they raise them in open pens where there are hundreds, if not thousands, of chickens running around. Uh, if you want a, a really good image of this, um, see the movie called Food, Inc., and it gives a, a great representation of commercial uh, chicken raising. Now, with that in mind, so you've got one bird in a one-by-one one cube, so let's look for a second at, at your, your floor. Is it tile? If it's tile, the typical tile on the floors are one by one. So imagine that three-dimensional. You have a one by one cube that's a cage. Now imagine for a second, if you will, that those cages are stacked on top of each other in many rows high. Um, what this does is it allows the commercial farmer to bring more birds to market more quickly. If they're raising it in a flat floor plan, they want to get as many chickens into that space as possible. Um, when you're watching the video Food Inc., you'll see dead chickens that are lying there, uh, and that's part of their equation. They know that some animals, uh, some chickens are going to die. Uh, they know that when the chickens are confined, that there's not going to be food enough for everyone, and that's going to result in, a, in an increased mortality rate. Um, they also know that when the chickens get hungry, they'll eat pretty much anything, including themselves and other birds. The birds will become cannibalistic. As a result of this, they will debeak them uh, or trim the beaks off and remove the horns on the back of their legs so they have no defense mechanism. This process, maybe not the most honest method of raising chickens, uh, is very problematic. Um, if we're doing the stack coop problem, what we have is fecal collectors, automated fecal collectors. It's basically a belt that runs through the system. As the chicken poops, the, the uh, poop rolls downhill, so to speak. So if you're the chicken on the top, you're the king of the poop. If you're the chickens on the bottom, the one on the very bottom is going to get basically a lot of poop throughout the day. Um, as poop falls downhill, what these fecal containment systems are, are supposedly doing is removing the fecal matter from the, the food and from the containment systems. Now the problem with that is they also have an automated feeding system and the grain comes in on a similar belt. 
Now you can imagine you've got a system of pulleys and belts flying around at rapid paces, and what's keeping the grain separated from the poopy? Um, they have, as of yet, to develop a magical poopy feed separating fairy, and if you can develop that, big money for you. In laying farms, male chicks uh, are uh, obviously don't lay many eggs. Um, so what happens is they're commonly fed up, uh, or fairy, excuse me, f commonly ground up and fed to other chickens to help defray the expense to help defray the expense of the feed. Um, feed is very expensive. Grain is very expensive. Uh, ground up chicken is a natural protein, so by feeding it back to the animal, we have learned about this with beef, it becomes very problematic. Free range chicken. Um, this is one that's a little bit vague. A little bit vague. The law states that a bird raised in a free range environment must be allowed to move about freely. Now, what this can mean is that if you leave the door of the cage open, they have the autonomy to come and go as they choose. However, if you're a chicken and you know that if you cross that gate you're going to be electrocuted or slammed back in, you're probably not going to jump out of that cage. It's cool. Crap on me all you want. I'm going to stay here and just get fat, eating poopy and feed. Um, in a free-range setting, generally what they're doing is they're raising them in an open paddock system. So it kind of looks like a, a pup tent or a, a portable cage on wheels, and they move it around a facility or a grounds. You can do it in your yard. Um, you need a little hen house, an area where they can go out of the sun, where they can hang out and they can chill and relax with, with their cronies and talk about what's going on, who's got the nicest eggs, so on and so forth. Um, but when they're out there, they're going to be fed grain, they're going to eat some grass, they're going to eat some seeds, they're going to get the occasional worm, and that's going to lead to a much happier, healthier bird. Um, they're going to get more exercise. Uh, it's going to aid in the aeration of the soil because they you've ever seen chickens, they kind of scratch the ground. Um, they are also pooping, and chicken poop is very high in nitrogen, which is very good for soil, so it helps the soil to grow. In some farming situations, what they do is they actually will put the chickens onto pasture, move them around to help stimulate the production of grass, and then they'll move beef in to eat the grass that has been fertilized, naturally, so to speak, by the chickens. And there you have this symbiotic relationship, which is incredible. Inspection of poultry. Um, as we've mentioned before, any meat that is produced for human consumption must be inspected. Just like we mentioned before, they're looking for anti-mortem and post-mortem, making sure the animal can walk itself into the facility, making sure that after the animal has been dispatched, that it has been processed in a humane and clean environment. Grading, as with everything, is voluntary and is paid for by the packer processor, which drives the price up. The U.S. consumer grade for poultry are U.S. grade A, B, and C. Um, a grade birds are free of holes in the skin and they're consistent thickness of fat and they have no deformities. Um, B grades are a little bit different. Uh, they're used for making chicken byproducts, hot dogs, bologna, nuggets, all sorts of fun, fabulous chickeny food. When we are storing poultry, we want to store them in as cold a place as possible. Um, and this is due to the instability of their fats. Generally, we'll store them in ice, and that's called ice pack chickens. It comes in a box, it's packed in ice. Uh, it's a mess, no matter how you store it or what you develop, there's going to be chicken stuff everywhere. Um, you can set up a system of sheet pans, and you can drill holes and rig it with pipes, which helps to decrease the amount of water coming out. Um, another very feasible way of purchasing them is gas flush, and we're getting the gas flush chickens now. Um, which means they come in a little bit sturdier box, and when you open it up, there's no ice. Uh, they've been flushed with an inert gas, which helps to prevent them from oxidizing. And now I just want to congratulate you on completing another class in your journey to understanding this craft we call cooking. Be safe. Be well. Good luck. It's been a pleasure having you in my class. I know it's only day seven, uh, but it's an honor to work with you and to learn from you and to teach you.